one time a doctor told me I was overhydrated. I was drinking too much water. In the words of Jonathan Van Ness, can you believe? What's up, Buttercups? It's me, Amy Young, and welcome to another installment of Q and Amy, where you send me your cues, your relationship struggles, your single lady woes, and I offer my A, and then we all go home happy. Please? Today's anonymous viewer writes in, Hi Amy, over the past six months I've been dating and meeting lots of people, even some guys I really like, but nobody likes me back or wants to pursue anything serious. I'm embarrassed to say it's taking a toll on my self-esteem and finding out that my ex has moved on recently didn't help. I know you talk a lot about self-love and self-worth and I really wish I wouldn't let rejection and still being single affect me so much, but I'm struggling. Maybe I'm doing something wrong or something's just wrong with me. Can you help? Can I help? No promises, but I hope so. Okay, so first off, I made a video about not taking things personally that I think really might be useful here because I'm going to be highlighting one major point. When we take rejection personally and we allow other people's feelings and perceptions about us to affect how we feel about ourselves, we are simply confused. Because we're assuming that other people aren't liking us or choosing us because something must be wrong with us. And when we think about it that way, it's because we are in the habit of disapproving of ourselves. Like our self-worth is already pretty kind of low. So then we take this person's rejection and we decide to use that as evidence to support this crappy belief that we have about ourselves. Aren't humans the best? But listen, okay, people make decisions because of who they are and where they are and what they want and their unique preferences and all this stuff that has very, very little to do with our lovability or our humanity or our worthiness or what have you. Like just because somebody or a lot of somebodies don't wanna be with you doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. Think about it this way. You're at a restaurant and a waiter hands you a dessert menu and you take a look and after a little while you decide on the tiramisu. Did you pick tiramisu because the other desserts on the menu are like disgusting and something is really wrong with them? Like they probably shouldn't exist? Or did you pick tiramisu and therefore reject the other options, the lava cake, the salted caramel bullshit, some flan, because for whatever reason you just wanted some tiramisu? Even if you pick tiramisu, you can probably still acknowledge that lava cake is like a really delicious dessert, but for whatever reason, you didn't want it. This is how 90% of dating decisions are made. Someone can go on a date with you or even be in a relationship with you, but you know what? For whatever reason, you are not their tiramisu. Now the secret to self-love and self-worth, which are the secrets to like not giving a flying fuck about rejection or who's choosing you, is deciding that no matter what, lava cake is delicious and you are the lava cake in this scenario. Just because someone doesn't order it doesn't mean it's not amazing. It doesn't mean that lava cake is bad and it doesn't mean that someone else isn't gonna come along and fucking die for that lava cake. But now here's where this dessert metaphor like really kicks it into high gear. Cause at an actual restaurant, if nobody's ordering the lava cake, like for months, for a year, nobody's putting in orders for lava, guess what? They will take the lava cake off the menu. And this is what a shit ton of humans will do in their lives as well. We decide that we must not be worthy of being chosen. Like we take ourselves off the menu. I mean, you're going on dates, right? And everybody just wants tiramisu. Your ex, he got a really good taste of the lava cake and he doesn't even want it. So like this lava cake must just be like super defective and undesirable. Incorrect mundo, you fucking sweet treat. A solid foundation of self-love and self-worth stems from knowing that lava cake is effing delicious and it's an awesome selection no matter what. Like we all have to decide independently that we are gonna be die-hard lava cake super fans. Again, remember like you're the lava cake because your worth and your value is not externally determined. It has nothing to do with popularity or public opinion or who wants to take a bite out of you or who doesn't. Your worth and value is determined when you decide that lava cake is an amazing dessert, period. No matter who orders it or doesn't order it or asks for seconds or takes a few bites or licks the plate, no matter what, you are the yummiest. You are so good 
and you belong on the menu. So Anonymous and everyone, it is high time that we become die-hard lava cake super fans for ourselves. You need to know how yummy and good and ooey gooey delicious you are and you don't need to argue with it, you just need to decide. And listen, if you could use some help, like awakening to your lava cake deliciousness, well then I have some very good news. I am running an amazing four week group coaching program designed specifically for people who are ready to be their own die hard lava cake super fan. It is called the self love trifecta. You can check out all the details and sign up via the link in the description box. The doors close Friday, August 3rd at 10 p.m. Eastern. So get your butt in there before it's too late. Otherwise, I hope this was most helpful. You know, subscribe, like, share, all that internet jazz. And until next time, mad love from me to you. I'll see ya.